So what's the Enokim Oxo electric scooter? That's coming right up. Hey guys, it's Rick from Run Playback. In this video, we'll be checking out the Enokim Oxo electric scooter, a dual motor scooter with decent specs and a colorful design. In this review, we'll dive into its key features, performance, and some things that could be improved. So let's get to it. One of the standout features of the Enokim is its single arm design, which gives it a clean and minimalist aesthetic. The orange and black aluminum alloy frame also provides excellent corrosion resistance and strength. However, it's important to note that the rear footrest is made out of plastic, which can eventually wear down or get damaged over time. The adjustable high and low suspension is a notable feature, allowing riders to fine tune their scooter's shock absorption based on the terrain they encounter. This feature contributes to a more stable and comfortable ride. However, adjusting the suspension settings requires a special tool and may take some time to install. The Enokim comes equipped with 10-inch pneumatic tires, which offer a good compromise between comfort and stability. They handle various surfaces reasonably well, although riders should be cautious when navigating rough terrain to avoid potential punctures. With dual 1,000-watt rated, 1,300-watt peak brushless motors, the Enokim electric scooter has impressive acceleration and a top speed of over 30 miles per hour. It's a thrilling experience for riders who crave power. The 57.6-volt 26 amp hour battery also provides substantial range with up to 68 miles on eco mode. However, achieving this range is dependent on factors like rider weight, terrain, and weather conditions. All right, so today we're checking out the Enokim Oxo 2023. So the Enokim Oxo is a pretty powerful scooter. Now in terms of design, we have the single-sided suspension and you have this nice orange and black colorway. And by keeping all the components on the left side, it keeps the right side of the scooter very clean and minimal. So if you look carefully, we have dual 1000 watt motors. Here's a look at the front motor and this is the rear. So each motor is 1000 watt rated and 1300 watts peak, which is plenty of power for steep hills. You also have the 10 inch pneumatic tires. You have this small integrated front fender, integrated rear fender. We also have dual hydraulic brakes. Now I do have some issues with the hydraulic brakes when I first opened this up. So when I press the levers, you'll notice that it goes all the way down and touches my knuckles, which means that it needs to be adjusted. I did try to adjust the levers here using the Allen screw over here. It didn't really work out. So my guess is we need more oil in the reservoir. The really need strong brakes on this thing and if you can't press it all the way down because it's banging into your knuckle like it literally goes all the way down here that means that you're not getting the most amount of brake pad on the rotors another issue was with the brake sensors so i was getting an error it has something to do with the internal brake sensors here like the electronic cutoff that communicates to the controller and there's a video online where enokim addresses that something about loosening the brakes the suspension is actually really really nice feels really smooth on any kind of terrain and basically it has these adapters so right now we have the low adapters on we're getting the lowest amount of space from the scooter to the ground and that makes it really stable on high speeds and these are the high adapters which raise the scooter up if you're doing some off-road stuff to go over bigger bumps or hills or something like that so the scooter has a 57.6 25.6 amp hour battery located inside of the front Frame, and this is the charging port. It sits a little bit low, so if you're a taller rider, you might want to push these bars out. You can easily change the handlebars if you need to, as this looks like a standard bike mount. So here you have a bell. You have a right-hand thumb throttle and your display. Basic layout black and white. So you have these integrated front headlights which are located on the bottom of the deck and these are really bright at night actually so you will be visible. And then you have one rear taillight over here. You don't have one on the left side just on the right. So the length of the scooter from the front to the back I think is about 43 inches. The platform here is about 23 inches. And again if you're a bigger rider you probably want more platform and uh, this material is pretty grippy especially this center part over here with the Eno Kim logo. Now one thing that's a little strange is this flexible rear plate where you could plant your foot. It's uh, made out of plastic, I think. I think all of this should have been aluminum just to make it a little bit stiffer. To fold it down, you have this rubber strap over here that you just have to release. Then you pull down this latch and this folds down like this and it connects into that hole. So that flex actually pulls down a little bit so this hook goes inside of it. But again, wish it was made out of metal. Total weight of the scooter is 74 pounds. So not very light. 
So if you have to carry it up a flight of stairs, it might be a little bit difficult. As you know, if you're into these powerful scooters, that just comes with the territory. Now the model that we got also came with this nice helmet and a front bag that you can attach to the handlebars and the stem. So now let's take the Inokim Oxo for its first ride. First ride with the Inokim Oxo. Turn on the display, turn on the lights. Three levels of speed. So we'll start at one. So it does have a kickstart. The throttle doesn't automatically turn on unless the scooter is moving. So that's a safety feature. I personally prefer the throttle to be on. So you got some nice acceleration. A little torque when you start up because that's a dual motor. But uh, when you actually throttle down all the way or you pin the throttle down it's going to just max you out so i'm not even really going that fast so if you want like a smooth ride so i'm going uphill right now and this is maxed out <laughs> on level one this is as fast as i'm going to go so now we're on power level three let's kick start into it and tons of torque right off the line very maneuverable very easy to control Very nice. The brakes are really squeaky. Again, issues with the brakes. But yeah, tons of acceleration with the dual motor. I really like it. So you got a lot of low end torque, tons of low end torque. High end is really nice once you hit max speed. And then going uphill here, maxing out at about 21, 22 miles per hour uphill. About 23, 27, 28, 29, about 30 miles per hour on the display. Yeah, tons of power, but again, the brakes need to be adjusted slightly because they keep hitting my knuckles. So yeah, like I said, the flex on the rear footrest over here is a little weird especially if you're wearing the wrong shoes you probably won't get enough grip on it to feel comfortable since it's dual motor and on level three you're going to get a lot of low-end torque and if you're not ready for it it's going to kind of throw you off i think if you're taking this in the bike lanes or kind of like a crowded city it might be a lot i would probably start on like level one or level two coming off the line at three just feels like a little a little bit jarring if you're not ready for it i think for the price and for the amount of power that you get especially with dual motor you get over 30 miles per hour it's a pretty good deal but overall not bad the front and rear hydraulic disc brakes offer reliable stopping power enhancing safety during rides however there have been reports of brake sensors occasionally causing a display error which could be a concern for some users additionally the model we tested didn't seem to have enough mineral oil in the brake lines which also made braking somewhat compromised weighing in at 74 pounds the inokim may pose a challenge for users who need to transport it frequently especially those living in walk-up apartments it's a hefty scooter that may require additional effort to lift and maneuver making it less ideal for users who like portability additionally the rear footrest isn't aluminum which makes it awkward to carry since holding it by a plastic footrest could damage the scooter. The integrated headlights and taillight provide added visibility during night rides, increasing safety on the road. The illumination is sufficient for most scenarios, although some users might prefer their lights a little bit higher for enhanced visibility. Overall, the Inokim Oxo electric scooter is powerful and stylish with a few notable features, including a minimalist design, adjustable suspension, and impressive range and speed. However, it's not without its drawbacks, such as the occasional brake sensor issue, plastic footrest and its substantial weight. Potential buyers should carefully consider their priorities and usage requirements before making a decision. But in terms of power and range at this price point, the Inokim Oxo electric scooter is definitely worth considering. If you want to dive into more EV tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.